All right, everyone. Um, this is part four of the SketchUp introduction. Now, uh, I did a couple things. Uh, I went through and just sort of painted in all the colors for this model. Um, and I cleaned up the layers a little bit. So there's just really armature, people, and stairs. Uh, you should probably do the same thing for your own models. Um, but you'll obviously you'll have more layers. You'll have, you know, armature and different sort of levels of hierarchy, etc., etc., or and maybe you know sort them like differently by by their colors. Um, but just for now, this is what I have um, to just kind of show you what's going on. This video will be focusing more on the sort of visual styles, export options, um, and some of the different um, representation methods and techniques that SketchUp offers. Um, one of the first things you remember, perhaps up here, um, these are the sort of views views bar. And um, remember earlier we have, we have been sort of doing going to view toolbars and uh, pulling in this thing to turn things on. Um, you can also just right, right click anywhere on the menus and you can bring in things like that. And mine are popping up elsewhere because I'm on my second monitor here. But you know, basically, uh, these things you can open, you know, just like that. It's really simple. Okay. Um, so let's start with this. These are basically the different uh, sort of views, uh, preset views uh, that SketchUp has, and they sometimes can be helpful. Um, this is the isometric top. So you know, if I click on it, it moves me into the top view, front, right, back left whatever orientation but usually you know this is front um, so you know and it'll, it'll basically kind of center you on your model uh, the isometric will center you into this sort of three-quarters view depending on which one you're closer to so if I rotate it a little bit and click it it'll do that right so these are basically the sort of standard isometric views um, so these are just sort of you know help you navigate. You know if you're trying to get a specific view, it can be a little bit helpful. Um, but there's other ways of actually setting up views that we'll get to a little bit. Um, the second thing that uh, I want to show really is these. These are uh, the sort of uh, view options, and uh, we like uh, you kind of saw a little bit of this earlier. The standard uh, default is this one: the shaded with textures. Um, so you'll see that when I have materials, it's shaded, it has textures. Um, this basically just shows the solids. This is the black and white sort of version of it, and so it's called hidden line. Right? And still three-dimensional, right? Um, and then this one is called the wireframe. The wireframe basically is sort of the see-through mode. Right? And you'll see us actually kind of using and layering these different modes and methods uh, a fair bit as we kind of move on into compositing and rendering and things like that. Now, these are the couple ones on the right side. This is uh, monochrome uh, with only front and back face color. So you'll see this. Um, this is sort of like the clay model version, right? Um, at the same time, though, there's like these two toggles on the left side, the X-ray and the back edges. The back edges you kind of saw a little bit of earlier. It's not as apparent once you apply materials, but if you kind of compare the ones that have you know, the white versus this. You can still kind of see a little bit. Uh, it's more prominent in the solid ones, where you can kind of see where all the sort of hidden lines are and they show up a little bit, right? Um, if it's the x-ray, then it's actually basically this. It's a sort of like uh, x-ray semi-transparent jellyfish model, right? But then obviously you can combine these with all the different modes um, like that. So this is the x-ray with the uh, monochrome to get you know this sort of effect, right? So th there's a lot of combinations that you can sort of play around with here. Um, with one or the other, right? To depending on what you're trying to get at. Um, so, like, you know, for example, this might actually be good to kind of get the main sort of massings in there, but then you can still see a little bit of what's going on um, beneath or behind it, right? 
Now, uh, and this you can actually just turn off, right? So there are these are the vanilla modes. You can turn one or the other on. You know, they 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 sort of toggle in between. Um, but besides this, uh, this is the just like the very basic generic control um, of the view and the view style. But um, if you go to um, actually window. Um, these were toolbars, and there's a couple windows, like the materials one that we were working with earlier when you paint um, the components, uh, which I'll show you really quickly, actually. Um, so these are actually uh, the ones, so let's say components, component sampler. These are like the default components that SketchUp has, so you can actually insert these as well, just like click and drag them into the scene. Um, if you want tables, right? Um, there, these are ones that are already saved on your computer. So delivery truck. Ooh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna insert it uh, right now because it might sort of mess up some of the layer stuff uh, at the moment. But you know, just know that this is there. Um, and if you click here under navigation, then you can actually. So here are some of the favorites uh, architecture, and it will actually do this which means it'll actually dynamically download a lot of like the current favorites uh, so you can play around with this people 3d people 2d people um, but in model if you click on in model these are the ones that are in the model and a lot of these were the earlier ones that we had imported uh, with the people uh, but here in particular, you'll see actually these are the treads, treads number one, the treads that we created earlier, right? And so you'll see now, like, like just picking it, I can actually insert my own uh, again. So this this guy as well, right? So that means that uh, you can actually create your own and have them saved here and actually insert them you know, after the fact. So it's a really sort of powerful a tool a way of basically being able to kind of dynamically insert all this stuff all right um, the last one and I'll hide the materials the last one I'm getting to here is the styles so this actually more finely controls um, the view style now we had seen earlier like just a couple of the defaults this actually gives you much 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 finer control over uh, what things look like and so you can actually cycle through them uh, just to get a sense of you know, the different visual styles these are presets <clears throat> all of these are presets there's sort of these different um, combinations of settings but there are some sort of stranger ones like the, you know, the blueprint style uh, monochrome screen the sort of CAD I guess um, the sort of pseudo uh, hand drawn styles, <laughs> watercolor paper with pencil, right? So a lot of these are uh, sort of visual styles that you know serve to kind of stylize your drawings a little bit. These are usually kind of applied as a, a post processing filter. Um, and you can mess around with these a little bit. Uh, generally, there's a lot of different sets, color sets, uh, photo modeling, you know. Uh, sketchy edges which actually might come in handy so this is sort of like a sketch hand sketch style with different thicknesses uh, the varying degrees of you know line wiggling uh, sort of inverted black and white chalk style right? wavy pens um, you know basically uh, technical pen style there's a lot um, wavy pen styles someone who's been smoking too much um etc <laughs> etc et so you know you can basically and these are all presets right um but at the same time uh, you can actually go in and edit these um yourself and so if you you know in one one of the things that you can probably do is basically you know go and go around and you know say okay you know I kind of like this one but I just want to modify a little bit right so that's something you can do uh, let's see so this for example you have it then you can edit and you'll see that these are basically things that turn you know edges on and off 
uh, profiles, depth, you know, the extension basically controls how far you know, these sort of crossing corners go. Um, and you can sometimes, let's see, you have to refresh it sometimes to kind of see the, the difference. Um, the detail, what the stroke is, etc. Et um, it's probably, you can see it better in one of the default styles. Let's see. So if you go to edit, um, so you see the edges, the back edges, which is basically the sort of uh, this, uh, the back edges, you can turn it on and off. Uh, profiles, and if you change the numbers, and it's usually just a good idea to kind of play around with this. So, you know, I change that to 10, and you see, okay, you know, the marker gets really, really thick, or I can make it really thin, like that. So it's almost unnoticeable. Uh, Depends, and the depth you kind of controls uh, how strong the lines are in the foreground are versus the ones that are further way back. So you can toggle that on and off. Extension, like I said, controls how far these sort of crossing markers uh, extend. Uh, that's sort of crazy, right? Um, so it's usually something like two to four. Uh, you can have them off. You don't want them in the endpoints as well, right? So that just gives you kind of a cleaner look. And then you can control the jitter. Um, and the color by material, by axis, et cetera, et cetera, which is basically, you know, uh, the color of the markers um, would basically try to follow what the material color is or by axis. And a by axis is kind of weird because then you get you know red here, green there, but you know as in sometimes analytically it might make sense. All right, um, you can change the color here, make the color of the let's say the edges, uh, the edge styles you know uh, red or green or blue or gray or whatever. You know. So you have a lot of options here really. Um, so those are the edge settings right that's just one of them uh, the next one here is like face settings so you can set you know all the face settings what the colors are the transparency transparency quality etc etc um, and so if for this particular style you don't want this you want that uh, you can do that uh, background settings right do you want to have the sky or not so this is more an abstract you don't have the sky you want the ground or not um, change the background color and uh, you don't need watermarks in general um, and this last one uh, some modeling settings which basically just controls like what color things show up as when you have things selected or locked um, what guides are etc etc all right so you know this actually gives you a very fine sort of level of detail as far as controlling things um, controlling the look of your model uh, controlling you know what sort of visual style you want to basically um, implement or be looking for right but uh, I think the def some a lot of the defaults work pretty well um, you can fine-tune those a little bit but I think you know keep it simple uh, and sort of work with the painting uh, and the colors and you know that's pretty much most of what you will need Right, so that's the visual styles. Um, let me get into, so the next thing uh, I want to talk about is this, uh, which is, whoops, actually this, which is the shadows panel here. Um, you can also open the dialog box here this way. These are more or less the same thing, it's just this is sort of faster. But basically this is what toggles the shadows on and off. Um, by default, this is like a sort of universal uh, lighting scheme. Um, but if you toggle the shadows on by clicking this or clicking this, show hide shadows, uh, basically you'll get shadows. And these are realistic shadows as, uh, insofar as um, if you have the time and the geographical, lo geographical location dialed in correctly, um, it will give you uh, accurate shadows. So this is you know, noon roughly morning and so you can actually just sort of drag these around right which is pretty fun uh, what date time it is okay 
uh, can use sun for shading and you can control how dark or how light basically the lights are or how dark the darks get if you want really you know really dark shadows then you move this to the left um, and this is basically sort of the sort of range based of the uh, shadow gradients and um, if you don't want them on the ground you can toggle them off so they only show on your design uh, from edges or do they show on the faces or not like these are all you know these are all sort of settings that you can mess around with and um, they're very useful all right um, so those parts are mostly sort of pertain to um, the visual styles or the visual representation of the project and they uh, they'll still hold true for this um, these portions as well so you know uh, even the sort of more abstract ones and these sometimes can actually be easier to work with um, as far as you know uh, eventually moving into Photoshop to kind of composite drawings so uh, what I suggest is that you kind of try messing around with these a little bit kind of understand the parameters um, but what you can do is basically um, go to styles right and then what you can do is actually eventually make, make your own um, and so once you sort of uh, edit some of these and you can uh, actually look at um, these are sort of mixing uh, where you can actually mix some styles where that you like and sort of blend them um, if, if there's a couple and you can sort of play around with this uh, there's sort of no end to like really doing this but you should uh, just like pick a style that you like or like roughly create a new one um, and basically what SketchUp will do by when you click this is it will take the one you selected and make it you know give it a new name and you can rename it here so you can say Lee's for example style um, and then go in here and edit right edit whatever the settings are uh, and then you can save it and then this will be a sort of like a personalized uh, visual style then you can save and keep all right uh, so try that um, and I'll see you in the next one